Hello and welcome to game 61 from the 16th TCC Super Final, played between Stockfish and Alistein. We have a Trompovsky attack in this game, and if you would like to know more about these opening moves, then uh, watch the first video from my Trompovsky attack playlist where I explain uh, the ideas behind these moves. Now here after Queen b6, we have reached an important moment. In this position, all humans and engines prefer to play here bishop c1 and defend this pawn on, on b2. It's much better than b3. b3 is a distant second choice, second preference, but this weakens the dark squares here. So bishop c1 makes much more sense, especially that this bishop is prone to be attacked anyway. So bishop c1, main choice. Leila and all her opponents prefer bishop c1 here. However, in this game, we have e4. This is the last book move. And um, they are forced into this variation, where, of course, Stockfish took this pawn on b2 immediately. And since there's no other way of defending this rook than knight d2, white has to give up another pawn, this pawn on c3. And his two pawns down for somewhat better development but all engines agree that black is just better with those two extra pawns here now in the other game stockfish played here bishop c7 and uh, after g6 rook c1 queen e3 check knight d2 d6 knight c4 queen h6 queen b3 b6 he sacked the bishop for two pawns but then took also the rook on a8 and after castles, the game was eventually drawn. In this one, instead of bishop c7, we have knight e2. And they both agree that black is better, minus 0 0.6. Now the game continued with queen a5. And now d6, a very, very good move, making black's development even more difficult now. Taking this pawn is not good, because then... White could continue with king f2 to unpin this knight. And this knight wants to come to c4 with tempo and then take on d6 with check. And if bishop takes, then after bishop takes, this king will get stuck in the center and white will have huge pressure on this king. For example, queen d8, knight c4, d5 is actually the best move here. Otherwise, knight d6 is coming. After d5 and e takes on d5, uh, the d file closes down now and um, this reduces the pressure on the d file. Black can now play d6 to take away the d6 square from the white pieces, but white is still better. So instead of uh, taking on, on d6, we have e6, but this pawn now on d6 is a big thorn in uh, black's position and it's not so easy to develop these pieces now. We have king f2, knight c6, knight c4, queen back. And now after knight c3, white is threatening to play knight b5 and give a check on c7 and then take this rook. And it's not so easy to, uh, to counter this because a6 is uh, dropping the advantage. White can just simply play a4 here to cement this knight's position on c4. But... White can also play knight d5 here, and if black takes, then the e-file opens up, and that would be bad news for the black king, especially with this very, very strong pawn on d6 taking away e7. The black king would be killed here on the e-file. Here after knight takes on d5 and e takes on d5, instead of taking back, best for black is to play knight d4 here. But black loses the advantage and it's not so easy to play with black. There's a lot of pressure on these pawns. And um, also white has better development. These, these pieces are hard to develop. And uh, even though the game is equal, it's much easier to play with white here. So a6 would uh, pretty much drop the advantage. So Stockfish played here very energetically with g5, which sacks a pawn. But if white takes on g5, this would allow black to develop very, very nicely with knight g4 check. And if the pawn takes, black can regain this piece on g5. 
and now black would be actually much much better because the dark squares in white's position are just very very weak this bishop can't wait to uh, to get into these squares e5 or d4 and these pawns are also weak and especially the white king is very very weak in this position after something like knight b5 trying to fork and win the rook there's queen f6 check and after king e1 bishop g7 counter-attacking this rook on a1 and there's no time to win this rook on a8 for example knight c7 check king f8 and now white needs to save this rook after rook b1 just rook b8 and black is actually better because his king is much safer than the white king the dark squares are just too weak so taking this pawn on g5 doesn't quite work white needs to stick to his bishop to his dark square bishop and we have bishop e3 bishop g7 and now e5 forcing the knight to the rim but actually black is doing fine now because because it has pressure on this pawn on e5 and it's not so easy to defend Elishtein would like to play here f4 but uh, this would run into g takes on f4 and even though the queen can take on h5 black can take on e3 we check and then he can even castle and there's still pressure on e5 it's not so easy to defend for example if white plays here bishop d3 threaten mate on h7 then black can play h6 and queen g5 is coming and black will either exchange the queens or win this pawn on e5 and then he is up material and will be in a much better position so f4 is, doesn't really work so that's why Elishtein tried here h4 trying to make black to take here and then get in f4 and the point is now that knight, knight e5 doesn't work because after h takes on g5 this knight on h5 doesn't really have squares and black would be forced into this variation with knight takes on c4 bishop takes and now bishop takes on c3 but after rook takes on h5 white is better actually because <clears throat> now he has the safer king these pawns and this bishop give enough shelter for the white king and the black king is in trouble he can't castle here so easily because white can't put a lot of pressure on the h file and white has the much more active pieces all, all his pieces are working very nicely while black has still trouble with developing theirs so knight takes on e5 doesn't quite work yet so stockfish actually took on h4 but now came f4 defending this pawn and now we have knight g3 attacking the rook rook h3 and now h5 this is a multi-purpose move first of all it takes away the g4 square from the queen this could be important in some variations and it also allows bishop h6 since now white defended this pawn e5 black can move his bishop to h6 and defend and attack the f4 pawn elishtein continued with king g1 and now after bishop h6 the game is actually equal elishtein managed to create enough play to counter the two pawn deficit which is actually three now and uh, the game continued here with knight e2 challenging this knight on g3 we have b5 knight takes pawn takes and here after analyzing positions for about two minutes elishtein decided to take this pawn on h5 there's no time to save the knight from c4 because then black has knight e5 making use of the fact that this pawn is pinned to the bishop on e3 after pawn takes bishop takes with check king h1 bishop b7 and black has a very very strong attack his bishops are very very strong and black has decisive advantage in this position he also has uh, these queenside pawns that can march forward this is minus 5.5 for black so there's no time to to save the knight in this position so elishtein took here on h5 the point is that black doesn't have time to take this knight because then queen g4 is very strong elishtein would threaten to win a piece because after rook takes there's queen g8 mate so uh, there's no time to, to uh, take this knight here instead we have f5 which takes away the g4 square from the queen 
And now what's very important is that white can't really afford to take this pawn en passant because now actually the knight on c4 is hanging because after queen g4 stockfish would have queen f6 defending this bishop and there's no tricks anymore with rook takes on a6 and mate on g8. So taking en passant doesn't really work. Elishtein blitzed out here queen f3 which is a very strong move. It attacks the pawn on g3 with the same idea of taking on h6 and mating on g8. And it's also defending this bishop on e3. In some cases, knight e5 could be possible when uh, black could take here on e3 with check, especially if this knight moves away. Now, if b takes on c4, then uh, the bishop can take on c4 to not allow this one to activate. And after king f8, queen takes on g3 is quite strong. The threat is queen g6 here, and if the knight takes on e5, then white would have rook f5 check. Since uh, if this pawn takes, then the white bishop opens up, and uh, white could be mating on f7. So b takes on c4 doesn't quite work yet. We have instead king f7, makes sense, it's guarding these entry points into black's position. And here Stockfish was actually expecting queen takes on g3 and then he intended to, to uh, go for queen exchange with queen g8. You know, after queen takes, king takes, this would lead to a, an equal position after knight d2 and knight b4 threatening a fork here on, um, on c2, forcing pretty much bishop takes on f5, bishop takes on f4, rook takes, king takes, and now it looks like white is winning a piece but actually after a5 this bishop will be driven away from this diagonal and then black could take back the piece and this would be a completely equal position this is what stockfish was expecting however in this position of the king f7 elishtein blitzed out another move and that is a4 and now stockfish suddenly saw red before his eyes and took this pawn on f4 and all the tactics work very very nicely in uh, black's favor for example if bishop takes on f4 then black has knight d4 attacking this queen and uh, threatening to take you with check so there's no time to take this rook and the queen would be forced now to go back to still guard this rook on h5 but after b takes on c4 now black is better with the queen chased away from uh, aggressive positions here on the king side, black won't get mated and he has extra three pawns. All kind of stuff are threatened like c3, c2, bishop g7, queen g8 with a lot of pressure in uh, from all kind of directions. With the extra three pawns, black would be easily winning this one. So bishop takes on f4, not good. Of course, queen takes on f4 doesn't work because it drops this rook on h5. What else can white try here? Well, another idea is to actually take this rook first before capturing on f4. But this doesn't work either because after queen takes on h8, there's a mate threat on h2. And white can't even take this pawn. White would be forced here to play bishop e2. But then after bishop takes here with check, queen takes check, king f1, and b takes on c4, black wins a piece. And after bishop takes on c4 and knight d4, white is in big trouble. All kind of stuff are threatened and black is a piece up. So this variation doesn't work either. So not finding anything better here, Elishtein took on f5 with check. We have now pawn takes and queen takes on f4, but stockfish has here queen h4, threatening again to mate on h2, and white can't avoid the queen trade here. We have queen takes on f5 check, but of the king g7, the mate on h2 can only be stopped by queen f6 check, exchanging the queens, giving up a pawn, and uh, stockfish is up material here. We have a takes on b5 and after knight e5 trying to exchange the knights we have knight b6 making use of the fact that this pawn is pinned. We have rook b8 counter attacking the knight check. If now king e6 then knight f4 is good. We have king f7, knight e7 
and now bishop f bishop b7 and here rook takes on a7 is possible but before taking that pawn elishtein went for the g3 pawn and played bishop f4 here we have the rook defending the knight bishop takes on g3 c4 and now in order to win another pawn elishtein took out this knight and then took on c4 we check we have king f6 and now finally elishtein took also on a7 and he won quite a lot of pawns he now has one two three pawns against one but he ran out of steam and now it's stockfish's turn to hit and stockfish hit really really hard here with rook c5 and of the bishop d3 rook g5 threatening to take here on g2 we check we have rook a2 defending but stockfish now challenged that rook with rook a8 the rook can take obviously because then he drops here with check we have rook d2 and now rook a4 with multiple threats rook d4 is threatened to pin this bishop rook g4 and rook a1 also in some cases elishtein continued with rook f2 check king e5 rook e2 check king takes on d6 knight f5 check king c5 and after rook c2 check and king b6 elishtein ran out of checks and he played here knight e3 defending g2 but now again it is stockfish's turn to play and he played here d5 rook d2 rook e5 attacking the knight king f2 rook f4 check king g3 and now stockfish restricts the white king with rook f8 knight d1 and rook g5 check and after that he played even d4 to restrict the knight king h1 rook e8 king h2 bishop d5 and slowly stockfish is taking over the whole board we have knight b2 rook e1 rook c2 king a5 rook f2 and finally after rook c1 the game was ended in stockfish's favor once this king gets into c3 white's position will be completely destabilized and by constantly threatening to, to push this pawn forward and also take on g2 white will be forced to sack even more material and uh, black would be winning an interesting game after slightly dubious e4 move here instead of bishop c1 i would say here are the standings after 65 games stockfish is leading by a whopping eight points unbelievable Stockfish is just very, very strong tactically. In the end, I would like to thank to Adolf, Todor, Radu and Guilherme for their contribution to my channel. Please subscribe, like and share and check out some of the other games. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.